The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 679 Onward and Away We're moving, Maple murmured, laying on her back with her hooves in the air and a blanket nearby. Starlight could feel the ship's harmonic vibrations, a soft resonance that carried down from the energy comet and reached her all the way through her cabin's plush bed. Come back to sleep, she mumbled, shifting to bury her face beneath a foreleg. On her other side, Amber snored loudly in agreement. Maybe, but I'm not that tired. Maple didn't move. You are? Oh. At that, Maple rolled over. Did you dream? she whispered. Starlight had. It was a normal dream, the kind she could barely remember even though she was only half awake, involving wagons and iron ridge and large fish and slow, gentle rocking. Eh, nothing important. Nothing nightmarish somehow, and nothing related to the cave or Yenavan. I'm tired, she muttered, wanting to preserve the peace while it lasted. Maple answered by rubbing her face against the pillow and didn't speak. The shadows around Maple and Starlight's door rippled, and Valet straightened out of him, arching her back and yawning. Her hooves wandered, and when she reached the deck, night sky greeted her with a sea of clouds below. She let herself onto the bridge without knocking. Gerardo noticed anyway, swiveling in his pilot's chair and welcoming her with a nod. I see you're up and about. And I see we've ditched that bay, Valet replied, pacing closer and brushing a wall with her tail. Did I really sleep that long? Well, you were a little out of it, Gerardo suggested, giving her an amused look. But no worries. It took some doing and a lot of improvised communication, but I think we reached a happy ending between the castaways and the locals. I gave them the rest of our heating supplies and feel reasonably optimistic things will turn out well. Yeah, but you're always an optimist, Valley pointed out. So, what else did I miss? Not all that much, happily. Gerardo focused again on the controls. With Miss Granada out of the picture, most of the merchants felt like a truce with an enviable outcome. Of course, they took a little convincing the other side would accept, but once I got our Cerusian friends actually talking with them and slowed down enough to understand each other, things fell into place. He leaned back, satisfied. The Cerusians were deeply unhappy, of course, with our infiltration of the cave. They felt they were protecting Yenavan and still think we're stealing him from them. But even if we're not a welcome party back there anytime soon, they recognized the merchants truly wanted to leave and accepted they needed their help to survive to boot. Valet's brow furrowed. Hold on a sec, what? They were upset we were taking him away? Not that we unsealed him or whatever, but that we were hauling him off? Gerardo didn't meet her eyes. I know you're about to ask why we didn't stay and try to reach something more agreeable. Valet, after a battle like that, I'm astonished there's anyone alive in that valley at all. I made a decision that we should stop meddling while we were ahead. So does anyone even know now what was really going on in there, or what? Valet crossly tapped a hoof. Do we know for absolute certain we're not seriously going to regret hauling Yenavan off against his wishes for some reason more serious than him trying to kick our ears? If anyone does, it would be Shinespark, Gerardo answered. She's been keeping watch on him since you recused yourself, and since I haven't heard word from her that we should turn around, I assume nothing's come up. Valet ran a wing for her bangs. Yeah, I probably should go relieve her. She shook her head. Look, whatever. Being a good guy is hard, and if none of those dudes were going to appreciate it, I'm fine with leaving. Just gonna go see... Yeah. Oh, she interrupted herself with a yawn. Gonna go see what's going on at the hold. See ya. Remember, take this. Giordo offered her the black sword. Useful against him if he tries anything. Yeah. Valet took it, running a wing over its flat, polished metal, and taking a moment to stare at her colorless reflection. Starlight really thinks this used to be yours, huh? Used to be? More like still is mine, and Gerardo nodded sagely. I must admit, I am handy with a sword. Fortunately, you don't need to know a blade's history to use it effectively. Steel is steel, 
and a sharp edge needs be nothing more than a sharp edge. Wordlessly, Valene nodded, staring into the blade, and walking away with that as a reply. For any other sword, that would be true, everything Gerardo had said. But hadn't Felicity said this sword had a history? Something emotional that gave it its unusual magic? A sharp edge might have been sharp, but this one cut a lot deeper than skin. A sadness burned into soulless metal like silhouettes after a blast. Valet looked up from the sword and continued her walk. Maybe she'd show it again to Felicity later. First, she had to talk with her about everything she said she would before the battle, like how she supposedly worked as an assassin. There was probably a lot more she couldn't even remember. Knock, knock! Valet stepped down the rear staircase, letting herself into the cargo bay where Shinespark had spent the past week reconstructing Niala. Now it was home to Yanavan, his wings bound and carefully tied against a wall. Shinespark sat before him next to Niala, the latter with Valet's flash club mounted to her back and turned permanently on. Valet, Niala's voice chirped, a charging cable connecting her main board to the ship's power frame. You're here, Shinespark greeted, visible bags under her eyes. Valet quickly scanned the room, deciding there was nothing much else of interest. Yanavan felt reasonably safe. Yep, she replied. I'm here. Banana Sparky, you don't look great. It's been a tiring few days, Shinespark admitted, keeping her posture proud. And it's not going to get better, thanks to Granada. Uh, she's tied up in the observation room. She shook her head, teeth gritted. How did we start taking so many hostages? It's so much work sorting through this. I don't envy you, Valet shrugged. So, how's guarding this guy? Is he chatty? Tried to turn you against us yet? Shinespark shook her head. He keeps asking to see Starlight. I think he's sulking because I keep telling him no. She gave Yanavan a strange look, who was currently looking frustrated and vaguely pedantic against a wall. It makes me wonder how he became a monk lord. It feels like he's less mature than I was in Iron Ridge even. Isn't that supposed to be a position of respect and leadership? Yeah, beats me, Valet shrugged. So, how locked down is he? You should go take care of yourself in Granada. I just had a sweet break. But do I have to hold this guy's sword point? Or is it more of keeping a few eyes in the room just in case he starts an evil ritual or something? Please don't demean me, Yanavan warned from the wall. You're talking about things you have a false understanding of. And you're just a bunch of hot air, Valet retorted, not even sparing him a glance. Niala rocked a little on her wings. I can hold him on myself, now that Shinespark gave me a light. But I would appreciate the company. Valet trotted over, sitting down beside her. Yeah, I can do that. Bananas. I've got so many ponies I probably need to talk with. Yeah, see ya, Sparky. Can't wait until we have all these loons off our tails. Shinespark left with a grateful nod. Thanks, Niala said. And then it was just her, Valet, and Yanavan. The monk didn't actually feel that dangerous, though maybe it was a product of the light. I see I have a new visitor. Yanavan spoke first. Congrats, you do. Valet folded her legs. You gonna try to use me for entertainment? Because if so, I can leave. Yanavan shrugged, and a staring contest ensued. The monk, Valet quickly realized, had the patience and tolerance for solitude of someone who had spent 30 years in isolation. Yeah, I give up. I'm bored. Valet stood up. So, what's the deal with the sword? Why do my friends and I remember differently where it came from after running around in your cave? How'd you do it? And why this thing in particular? Yenavan blinked owlishly. You likely trifled in magic you have no business with. That cave was my home, but I didn't build it. Its protective enchantments were in place long before I was foaled. So, you don't know. Cool. Valet nodded. And what's the deal with all the other bad ponies in the dump? They try to protect your cave from the Varsidelians or something? They were like me, Yanavan retorted. Those who chose to no longer live under the Nightmother's vengeful eye. 
I provided a grounding for them, and they protected my location from outsiders. It was a simplistic arrangement. Like how they almost died to the Varsidelians and you did nothing to help, Niala quietly added. I don't think you made a very good leader, if you're telling the truth. Valet raised an eyebrow. Yenevan squirmed. Yep, well, I'm bored. Valet yawned, leaned back, and glanced around the room, looking for something to make herself comfortable. Bananas, this is going to be a fun guard shift. End of chapter 679